You can't say what God says about your sin until you see what God sees, okay? You can't say what God says till you see what God sees. Repentance is the process of seeing what God sees. We've surveyed 100 people and the top five answers are on the board to this question. Name a rationalization that leads to sin. Okay, here's the top answers. Number five is, I'll just do it one time. Yes, it's wrong. Yes, it's dark. Just once. I'm just going to do this one time. I've been faithful to my wife all these years. I'm just going to do it once. I, I have been uh, uh, busy and tired and, and restless at work. I'll just try this drug. Just, I'll just get drunk just this. I'll just, I'll just once, just one time, and sin is such a liar. And down we step onto that slippery slope, and down we go into addictive behavior and, and just destruction of family and reputation. We, we deceive ourselves. Just this once I can handle it. Oh, here it is. Nobody will know. Nobody, my, my sister won't know. My, my uh, spouse won't know. My save, savior won't know. Won't know. There's a lot of verses in the Bible. But the one that my mother wrote on my heart more than any other verse was this one from the book of Numbers. I think it's 2332 or... 32, 23, one of those two. I have biblical dyslexia in this moment. <laughs> Numbers, it says, be sure your sin will find you out. Well, I'll tell you what, a mom can put something in your head, can't she? And, and what, what a good thing to have in your head. I've always had that sense. I've always been afraid that if I did something foolish, my mom already told me this, it's going to come out. It's going to come out. You'll hide it for a week. You'll hide it for a month. It's going to come out. So don't kid yourself. Sin is deceiving you. And if you allow it, of course, that's not true. And then this. Of course, that's a, the battle that all of our young people are facing. That's not sin. That's not wrong. Everyone's doing it. Look, majority response is not a test for validity. Okay? Do you understand that sentence? Majority response is not a test for validity. If you're going to base your life on what's most popular, what's most prevalent, what's most everywhere, you're going to get yourself into a lot of hot water. You know, I, I, I think people like to read People magazine and see what's going on with people's lives. Read it carefully and see what's going on with people's lives and the misery and the heartache that sin is plunging people into. Even as it's celebrated in music and on late night talk shows, sin is tearing a path of destruction across our country like a tornado across a Kansas wheat field. It is tearing a path of destruction through our society. Everything that God forbids, everything that God forbids he's right about. Not one testimony of, wow, he missed it there because this is awesome. My life has never been better. Not true, not true. There's a pleasure in sin for a season. There's a pleasure in it for a season. But when the tumor grows and you find out it's terminal, everybody else is doing it. What a terrible, terrible way to think. And then, this can't possibly be wrong. I've never felt this good. I've never felt this happy. I've, that, that's, that's a window of time where sin is literally taking over your life. All right? That's the worst moment where you're in it up to your waist and sinking fast. Pray to God that someone sees you and reaches out a hand and pulls you out before you go under. And then this most popular, God will forgive me. God will forgive me. I can have my cake and eat it too. 
I can do the wrong and live the lie and cut the corner and come to church and carry my Bible. I can have it all. Maybe for a little while you can, but in the end you cannot. Now, repentance is detecting and destroying the mental deception that allowed me to sin. Those lies that I had to tell myself, repentance is saying, that was wrong. That was wrong the way I was thinking. That, that was a lie. I lied to myself. I allowed others to lie to me. You have to detect and destroy the rationalizations that lead to sin. That's what repentance is. I'll say it again. Detecting and destroying the rationalizations that led to sin. Now, when repentance happens on the outside, when genuine repentance happens, it leads to two things. Because I think this message so far is begging this question, how will I know when I've repented? How will I, have I repented? I, I, think, I've, I think I have, I, I think I have repented. Have I repented? Have I? Well, thankfully, Everyone say thankfully. Amen. Thankfully, we needn't wonder about that. You can know if you've repented. Here's the two things that happen uh, with repentance. More on this at the end of the message. Repentance leads to two things. Confession. Confession. Uh, the Greek word for confession is homologeo. Uh, homos is uh, the word from which we get the word homosexual, ho homogenized. It means same. Homos. And legeo means to say. Same say. Same say. Okay? So confession is to say the same about your sin as what God says. Okay? But that's not an easy thing to do, to say about your sin what God says. And some people have been taught the shallow way of dealing with sin, which is just the first John 1, 9, you know. If we confess, there's the word, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. What does confess mean? Confess means to say the same. What does God say? God says it's sin. Now I'm calling it sin. I've confessed it. It's sin, God. It's sin. It's sin. My lust is sin, God. My deception is sin, God. My stealing is sin. It's sin. My substance addiction, it's sin, God. Now look at, look at. Confession requires a lot more than taking a little post-it note and putting it on your behavior and saying that it's sin. All right, I already told you, let's put that sentence back up again. Sin is a lot more than just, uh, sin is hardness, sin is stubbornness, sin is darkness, sin is blindness, okay? Sin is all of these things. Now look at, you, here, here there's a real key sentence in the message. You with me? Okay. You can't say what God says about your sin until you see what God sees, okay? You can't say what God says till you see what God sees. Repentance is the process of seeing what God sees. In order to sin, I had to see it as good. I had to see it as positive. I had to see it as helpful. When I'm lying in bed and tossing and turning and fretting and fearing, when the Bible says that God has not given me a spirit of fear, I had to convince myself that that was helping me. It was comforting me. My anxiety was comforting me. Even though the Bible says be anxious for nothing. Anxiety is sin. What is it? It's sin. And in order to confess it as sin, I have to see how destructive not trusting God, not believing God, not leaving it with God really is. Repentance is the process of seeing what God sees. And when repentance is genuine, confession comes easily. It's easy to say what God says when I see what God sees. Repentance, you can't fake this, bro. You can't phone this in. You have to come to the place where you genuinely mean it. If I could go back, I would do it differently. How many times have you told yourself you're going to change? 
How many times have you sat alone and promised God that today would be different? You've claimed his forgiveness for the failure of yesterday, but then you've gone right back out and fallen in the same trap all over again today. These are the moments when Satan comes at you hard and you start to believe that change is impossible. It's time to break this cycle. It's time to do something different so you can actually be someone different. It's time to make a change. Contact us right now and we'll send you the My Toughest Moments Journal, a special resource full of deeply personal stories from James McDonald. Journaling has been a big part of his growing relationship with the Lord and he desires the same for you. Discover the powerful difference this discipline can make and see how God has used some of Pastor James's most painful experiences as a means of lasting transformation. Call right now to receive this journal for your gift of any amount, along with a special video message meant to encourage you on this journey toward change. For your gift of $110, we'll also send you your own personal change journal so that you can begin faithfully recording God's hand at work in your life. You'll also receive one of Pastor James's most requested books, Lord Change Me, when you call now or visit us online. We'll also send you the 11 CD teaching series and a specially designed change process card that you can slip in your Bible or keep in your car as a reminder of your progress. Ask for the Lord Change Me collection when you call 800-545-6800 or go now to jamesmcdonald.tv. Here's the second thing. When repentance is genuine, it leads to confession and it leads to restitution. The surest proof of an unrepentant person is a lack of restitution. Restitution is where I make it right with the people that my sin injured. Okay? Now, Zacchaeus is the biblical poster boy for this. He was the guy who went around and stole from everybody and took what wasn't his and hid it and lied. And, and instead, of you, maybe you owed $100 on your taxes. He collected $400 from you and gave $100 to the uh, government and kept $300 for himself. And he did it over and over and over and over till the Lord convicted him that it was sin. Who's, who's, got, a, who's got a $100 bill? I need a $100 bill. Quick, 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 somebody. Somebody's got to have a $100 bill. You got it? Dig it out. I want it now. <laughs> quick, quick, quick. Run up here if you got it. I'm looking at you. You're digging. You got it? That's, pa pass it up here. <laughs> pass it up here. It's like a Pentecostal church now. We're taking an offering. <laughs> okay. All right. You will never see this again in this life, all right? <laughs> all right? Now, now, what's your name, brother? Andy, if I took Andy's hundred dollars and and uh, just tell me, church, is that right or wrong? I mean, is, that, is it is it borderline or are you fairly sure it's wrong? I'm not giving it back. Tell me, what is it? Okay, so currently I'm not seeing that, but were I come were I to come to the place where I agreed that that was wrong. If I were to say to you, you know, that was wrong the other week there where I took Andy's money. I should have did that. I was wrong. <laughs> What's the first thing you would say? Yeah. Lift up your voice. What should I do? Yeah. All right, all right. If I don't give it, see, when repentance is genuine, I want to make things right with the people that my sin injured. I, I want to make, now don't anyone else sin. <laughs> All right? I want to make it right with the people that my sin injured. That's restitution. That's restitution. Now, all of that was to define the concept. Let's move more deeply into it. Repentance is the first step in all change. Here it comes. Repentance is not easy. Okay? I just need to tell you the truth. It's not easy. 2 Timothy 2.25 says that God grants repentance. You've got to pray and ask God to help you repent. Repentance is not easy. Turn with me, please, over to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. We're chasing a theme through 
the important passages in Scripture now that discuss it. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, Paul says in verse 8, For even if I made you grieve with my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it. For I see that I grieved you, though only for a little while. As it is, I rejoice not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved into repenting. For you felt a godly grief so that you suffered no loss through us. For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. Notice a couple of things here. Notice that repentance begins with sorrow. You see that in the text there? You were grieved. You sorrowed. The word there means literally pain, internal hurting, soul anguish. Now, I'm sorry to have to tell you this. Not all sorrow leads to repentance. There is a worldly sorrow, a worldly sorrow. Notice he says in the text, for godly grief produced repentance to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. Look at the end of verse 10. The two characteristics of worldly sorrow are regret and death. Okay? Regret and death. Let's start with regret. Worldly sorrow. Sorry I feel so bad. That's worldly sorrow. Sorry I got caught. Sorry I got hurt. Sorry I couldn't handle it. Sorry I look so bad in this. Sorry you don't like this, God. That's worldly sorrow. And the way you know it's worldly sorrow... Here, here it is. Worldly sorrow produces regret. You're not really repenting. Are you, are you getting these things? Godly grief leads to repentance. Not all grief is godly. Some grief is worldly grief, worldly sorrow. That doesn't lead to repentance. How do I know if my grief is just worldly grief? because it's sorry I. Sorry I look bad in this. Sorry I got caught. Sorry I uh, I can't handle this. Sorry I'm such a failure. It's a focus on yourself. And the the key phrase, the key characteristic of that worldly sorrow that doesn't lead to repentance, the key phrase is regret. If your focus in dealing with your sin is regret, Why did I do this? Why don't I learn? Why am I like this? Why can't I change? That's regret. That's worldly sorrow. Now listen, most important probably sentence in the whole message. A lifetime of worldly grief or worldly sorrow, some people have that for their whole life. You've never truly been sorry for your sin. You've never truly been sorry like David was in Psalm 51 about his sin and how it affected God and about his sin and how it affected others. As long as you're just wallowing in your own pity party and me and how it happened to me and my life and blah, 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 okay, that's worldly sorrow. Now look at a lifetime of shallow worldly repentance results in death. And that's not talking about physical death because we're all going to die. People who truly repent and people who who only repent in a worldly way are all going to die physically. That's talking about eternal death, as in the wages of sin is death, as in hell for all of eternity. It never gets more serious than this. A lifetime of shallow worldly repentance leads to hell, not heaven. That's not a fun sentence to say. Am I now your enemy because I tell you the truth? Listen up, you who doesn't hunger for God's word, who has no interest in passionate worship, who never shares their faith, who isn't growing in righteousness, who can barely stir up a modem of interest in anything spiritual, who comes to church because it's a bigger hassle to stay home. Worldly repentance, not truly saved, can't change, not saved. 
a lifetime of worldly grief. Sorry I look bad. Sorry I got caught. Sorry you don't like this. Regret leads to regret, leads to death. If repentance was easy, everyone would be doing it. It's not easy. Repentance means changing your mind, literally changing it. Write this sentence down. Repentance means coming to the place where you can say, if I, if I could go back, I would do it differently. Hands up if you've made some major dis, uh, mistakes in your life you wish you, that, that, look, at hands up if you've made some major mistakes in your life, okay? I don't know if you've repented of those things. But if you have, your heart is, if I could be back at that point again, I would do it different. I would just do it different. I wish I never did that. I wish I never went there. I wish I never talked to him. I've repented of that. It was a major mistake. It wasn't my mom's fault. It wasn't my pastor's fault. It wasn't my, it was my fault. Point to whose fault it was. It was my fault. I blew it. I blew it. It wasn't my ex-wife's fault. It was my fault. I blew it. Coming to the place where you can say, if I could go back, I'd do it differently. No pretending, no going through the motions, 100% genuine. I would not make that choice again. You have to really mean it, by the way. Years ago, I had a man in my office who was from another church. God bless him. But he knew better. He sat in my office, and I said to him, calling his name, I understand that uh, you've left your wife. I have, he said. I understand you're living with another woman now. I am, he said. And I said, as a Christian man, as a, a person recognized as a mature follower of Christ, how do you justify that? Well, my wife, I said, I don't have any ears to hear that. Don't even tell me about her. All right? All right? Nothing that she could do would be justification for what you've done. Well, I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. All right, then. So you're going to... You're going to turn from the wrong and go back to your wife? No, he said, I'm going to leave my wife and I'm going to marry this person and then after I'm married to her, then I'm going to tell God I'm sorry. That is not funny. That is sickening. That is, that is the death of your own soul to contemplate sin and to count it and to measure it and to think somehow you're going to get on the other side of it and then... And then Fain, look at repentance. You can't fake this, bro. You can't phone this in. You have to come to the place where you genuinely mean it. If I could go back, I would do it differently. So we talk about sin a lot on the program. Have you noticed that? Yeah. And, and uh, like why, why exactly is that happening? Well, the, the message of the Bible is, is sin. Sin is the problem. The Bible yeah. is a problem solution book. It tells us about the God of the universe, but by chapter 3, uh, his creation has fallen into sin. Yeah. And sin is the massive problem. Then we spend the whole Old Testament dealing with the consequences of sin, learning how destructive it is, uh, learning how to turn from it. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, it's pointing to the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who had Amen. come and provide forgiveness from our sin and freedom from our sin and uh, uh, gain us access into the holy presence of God in a place called heaven that will be free from sin. So, I mean, it's a major theme in the Bible. Okay, so that makes total sense. It, it's in there. So if, if that's true, and since that's true, why is there not more preaching about that? Well, I, I just think that we have a lot of people who are messing with the recipe. I mean, honestly, I just think it's remarkable to me how many uh, viewers will watch programs that never mention sin, who will uh, listen to preachers who never bring up the subject of sin. It's on every page in the Bible. You can't rightly appreciate the solution until you know what the problem is. I mean, I mean, offer Christ. Christ for what? Christ for sin. Christ for God's forgiveness. Yeah. Christ for freedom from sin. You know, what would you think if you went to a doctor and they never talked about sickness? I got this great doctor. He never talks about sickness. He never helps me deal with my health. I got this big growth over here, but he never even mentions that. Really, really? And you need to go back to that doctor? 
God, forgive us for neglecting the subject of the Bible. You can't rightly understand the solution offered in Christ if you don't appreciate and understand the great disease that sin really is. It's a disease, and Jesus Christ is the cure. How many times have you told yourself you're going to change? How many times have you sat alone and promised God that today would be different? You've claimed His forgiveness for the failure of yesterday, but then you've gone right back out and fallen in the same trap all over again today. These are the moments when Satan comes at you hard and you start to believe that change is impossible. It's time to break this cycle. It's time to do something different so you can actually be someone different. It's time to make a change. Contact us right now and we'll send you the My Toughest Moments Journal, a special resource full of deeply personal stories from James McDonald. Journaling has been a big part of his growing relationship with the Lord and he desires the same for you. Discover the powerful difference this discipline can make and see how God has used some of Pastor James's most painful experiences as a means of lasting transformation. Call right now to receive this journal for your gift of any amount, along with a special video message meant to encourage you on this journey toward change. For your gift of $110, we'll also send you your own personal change journal so that you can begin faithfully recording God's hand at work in your life. You'll also receive one of Pastor James's most requested books, Lord Change Me, when you call now or visit us online. We'll also send you the 11 CD teaching series and a specially designed change process card that you can slip in your Bible or keep in your car as a reminder of your progress. Ask for the Lord Change Me collection when you call 800-545-6800 or go now to jamesmcdonald.tv. The more that you get in touch with us, the more that we're going to be able to minister to you. And so it's all about engagement. Yep. And uh, we have people waiting to pray with you. You could contact us um, by letter uh, on the address that you see there. Um, come on now. Um, let's, let's go forward together. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. This program was paid for by the friends and partners of Walk in the Word.